Some time ago I did a video on creating a reusable border and uh, when I checked it was actually done in 2009 so I've got a feeling I need to bring it up to date and I have made some big changes to it. Now the first thing we need to do for this reusable border is to create a template. So we're going to come over to the layers panel, we're going to put in a new empty layer by clicking on this icon here, in it goes over to the toolbox we're going to pick up the brush tool or try pressing B on the keyboard that gives you the brush tool make sure you got the default colors any other colors press D on the keyboard followed by X X has now put white as the foreground color now the way I like to work with brushes is to bring it over the image if you right click this is where you can select the brush you want to work with and the brush I've actually selected for this is if I just click on the little gear cog if we come down to the bottom it is the wet media brushes clicking on this it's asking us do I want to replace them well I'm actually going to click on append which will add it to the list these are the default brushes I've got here it's also well worth exploring any of these brushes they can all make really good borders but the one I've selected is this one if I just click on it there it is there extremely small at 39 pixels let's take it up in size gonna click on this gonna drag it up to got a feeling somewhere around about the 250 would be pretty good pressing enter or return I can remove that panel right let's click down let's drag it out like this now with this particular brush I like this line we've got on the bottom so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click again and I'm just going to swing this around so the arrow is facing down to the bottom there if you click down that removes the uh, panel and there it is you can see that line which I think is uh, going to add to this particular border right clicking again just in the recording area moving it around to that area clicking down dragging it out like this that looks pretty good and for the final time right clicking swinging it around there and if I just click on the top dragging it down like that great stuff that should be pretty good right the next thing we need to do is to pick up the wand tool so picking up the magic wand I'm going to click in the center and you can see a selection going right the way around the inside we're going to fill this with white which of course is on foreground color now there's a nifty shortcut to fill this with white that is alt backspace that is alt and backspace on a pc it is option delete that's option delete on a mac clicking on that and there it is looking pretty good using command d or control d that's command d control d we've got rid of the selection talking about selections that's going to be the next stage to turn this into a selection by coming over to the layers panel I'm now going to press command or control look at the way my little hand has now got a square on the back so the cursor has got a square on the back clicking down you can see there's a selection we're going to turn this selection into a work path so open your paths panel if it isn't already open if you go to window coming down to paths click on that that'll open it for you we're now going to come down to this icon here now this has changed in recent versions of Photoshop in slightly older versions well right the way from CS through to CS5 I think it was slightly different and I will put a screen grab up on that but if you click on it it has now changed that selection into a work path now once we got this work path we can come up to edit we can come down to define custom shape so we're going to be using custom shape so clicking on define custom shape it's uh, worked out a name for us you can put in whatever name you want but simply click on OK right pressing delete once has removed the work path pressing delete again has got rid of layer 1 our template next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply that uh, adjustable border to this particular image I'm going to use command J control J on this layer we're going to come up to layer we're going to go down to vector mask so we're going to be using a vector mask and I'm going to be going to hide all so we're going to be using hide all I'm going to switch off the background layer so we just see the checkable background now custom shape tool is in with the shape tool so holding on this coming down to the bottom there it is there custom shape tool you'll notice the way the menu bar has changed it says shapes here so this could be a good place to find our custom shape clicking on this 
the last one here, yeah, shape 21. If we click down on it, we've now selected it. Incidentally, you can right click, you can rename your shape, or you can delete it as well. So just right click to do that. But yeah, I think we'll use it. Okay, pressing enter or return will close that panel down. Now there is one important change we need to make. Come over to the top left hand corner here. It says shape. Yeah, that could be a logical one to use. Now from the drop down menu, make sure you select path. So change that to path. Once again, in older versions of Photoshop, there's a different icon. I will put that, that up as well. Right, I'm going to click down, I'm going to drag it out over the image. This is where you get the flexibility. You could do you know, portrait style images, you can do whatever shape you want with this. I'm going to pull it out to the full size of this picture. There it is. That looks pretty good like that. This is where we can take it a stage further. Bring your cursor up over this uh, vector mask. If you press down Command or Control, we've seen this before, the way your cursor changes, gets a square on the back. If you click down, we've got ourselves a selection. We can now come down to this icon here for the adjustment layer. Clicking on the adjustment layer, we're going to go to solid color. And this is the big change I've made since the previous version in 2009. Right, we're going to click OK to that and you're thinking, that looks interesting. Let's switch on the background layer. Let's come to layer 1. I'm going to press delete so we've removed that. You'll notice that the work path has gone as well. Let's come back up to the mask. I'm now going to use Command I or Control I. That's Command I or Control I. That inverts the mask and there it is. The flexibility of this is if you use Command T, Control T, that puts the transform tool around it. You can then change the position. If you wanted to sort of bring it into that area there, you can do that and perhaps crop this off entirely up to you. It really is completely adjustable. He says, adjusting it, taking it up a little bit more in the top there would be pretty good. Perhaps a little bit more to the side. What do you think? No, I'm going to leave that where it is. Perhaps more down on the bottom. And when you start looking around, if you think, well, hang on a second, what I'd like to do is just swap sides. So that goes over this side. Yes, because we don't need quite so much showing there. And if I pull that over this side, that could work better. So you can flip the mask around. You can do whatever you want with it. I like the way this is working. So I'm double clicking to apply. Right. I like this uh, white line around the inside. After all, I did make a big fuss about trying to get it in by changing the brush talking of brushes, pressing B on the keyboard will bring back the brush. I'm going to right click, going to scroll to the top, going to pick up a soft edge brush, pressing enter or return. Brush opacity is set to uh, 100%. I'm going to drop it down to 70% and I'm just going to fade this line in a little bit. Let's drop it down a little bit more. Let's go to 50% and just fading it in like that would be pretty good. don't want it quite so prominent. So round we go with that. And if I press 0, that's going to take it back to 100%. Perhaps just removing it from some of the bits and pieces here would be good like that. Just off that picture, off that picture there. So once again, this is really flexible. Just going to right click. Let's go back to the brush that I used, which was this one here. Once again, taking it up in size like this. I've got black as the foreground color, which is removing. I'm going to just press enter or return using the left hand square bracket to take it down in size a little bit. Let's just remove that. And there it is, the flexibility of using the mask. But there's more. What we can also do is a put in layer style. So clicking on this icon with the layer styles, let's try drop shadow. There it is with the drop shadow. Like the way that's working, we can move that around. We can adjust the position of it. It's also worth trying the uh, pattern overlay. That could be pretty good. If I just click on it, you can see there's the pattern. What have I got here? I've got, uh, looks like artist surface. So from the fly up menu, there it is there, artist surfaces. And uh, you can change the scale as we can see, dropping that down. But just play, just experiment, see what you come up with. And of course, with a solid color, we can choose whatever color we want. Let's pick up a color from the image here and let's just drop it down, making it a little bit darker. You might want to try something like that. Entirely up to you. I'm going to click cancel. Something else you can do is just drop the opacity down and perhaps even that would work. 
but go on give it a try it really is completely flexible completely adjustable so go on give it a go i hope you've enjoyed the video until the next time it is happy imaging and take care